All right, today we've got Kim's knee. Now, Kim has had a medial meniscectomy, so she's had surgery only 11 days ago on her medial meniscus to get rid of some of that tearing. She had a degenerative tear in there, and they've trimmed that out, and she's coming out feeling a hell of a lot better. Um, the amazing thing about her knee is how well she's improved postoperatively. Many of these knees, they come out very swollen and they get a lot of stiffness. The good thing about her is it's only a meniscal surgery, so there's no ACL component or any other complication there. So sometimes these ones go quite quickly, but what is surprising is how good her knee flexion is, and that is day 11. Now that may surprise a lot of you, but this does happen, and it is sometimes down to just good genetics probably, but also good surgery. Um, and she's just one of these fortunate people that her body hasn't swelled up a hell of a lot after the surgery. Some people swell up a lot, others don't. Now, she does have some swelling through here. So what we're doing all of this week, now this is, I've only seen her, uh, this is the second time I've seen her. So this is the um, sort of first week, if you like, meaning the week after the surgery. So we're in week two, but it's the first week of treatment. And we're trying to get all the soft tissue in here around where she's had the pain. Remember, this was a really painful, locked up, stuck knee because of that meniscal tear. We couldn't get it to the point where um, she could improve just with physio and exercise. Um, and the tear was big enough that it would just block the joint all the time. So she had to have surgery to get this right, otherwise her knee was just gonna go south. And now it's actually improved to the point that we can get stuck in there this week and loosen it up. And it's really important that we get rid of all this sort of sensitivity through the joint, but also mobilize some of this fluid that's stuck around the medial joint line, stuck around these portals. You can see these two portals here. Remember, that she's had her stitches out now. She had stitches out yesterday. So we can go around this stuff. You can see there will be a bit of fluid and swelling around and thickening around those portals. And they'll be a bit sensitive. We're just gonna stay away from that for the moment. We're gonna go around that. And also trying to get all that tissue, like I said before, that's been so sensitive and sore for the past, how long, Kim? Five months. Five months that she's battling away with this before she actually got surgery on it. Um, because you yeah, have five months of pain, it's gonna create a lot of tightness and sensitivity through there. So we can now work on that. So it's a double whammy. We're trying to loosen it up and we're trying to sort of flush out cement fluid and desensitize it so she can get in and exercise it. So that's one thing we're working on is trying to get one, the soft tissue really nice and loose through. It does give her a bit of relief through there too. The second thing we're trying to do is actually make sure that, that joint stays on the right track. Now, some of these joints come out really stiff and they have to be mobilized quite quickly. Um, Kim, unfortunately, fortunately, has um, got not too much stiffness, so we can start getting in there. Now, remember, I'm below those portals there on the tibia, and we just mobilize that joint to stretch it out. Of course, there's no ACL problem in here, so we can get stuck in. It's not gonna affect the surgery. Um, and this will help her extension and her flexion, trying to get movement in the joint. You feel okay with that, Kim? Yeah. Um, and we're working on a sort of an AP on the tibia. We're also working on doing it a little bit the other way, so blocking that tibia and going for an AP this way. So going to this direction here, and just this one you just gotta be a little bit careful of making sure that that doesn't hurt and you don't jam the front of the joint. You are trying to do a pure glide with it. You're not trying to just push you into extension. That's why we blocked it there, um, to try and get some range there. But the big one with these, if they have like zero degrees extension, which she has, so she's blocked there. The surgeon's very happy with that. It's the same as the other side, which is you know really good for day 11. We wanna focus on bending. now. She is allowed on the bike simply because she can go from 90 through to past 110. So she's got enough range to get on the bike. Now, once you can get on the bike as an, a stationary bike, it makes rapid changes in the flexibility and just the overall feeling of the knee. To help her with that, to help her keep that range and get that range getting better, we do a glide like this, which is the sort of standard AP glide into her knee. You feel okay with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and what this does is gives you that sort of almost a mulligan type approach where we're trying to get an AP glide to help it with that whole hinging roll mechanism that she does when she bends knee. And that'll just stretch out all the soft tissues through here and just give a little bit more movement 
So when she bends the knee, it's freer, she does more on it. So that's all our sort of mobilization of soft tissue work this week. We also get to try and walk a little bit, and I'll show you her walking in a minute. Um, and then there's a range of exercises that are very low level um, because she has to sort of stay in the confines of normal surgery. Even though she's doing really well, we still don't want to load this knee up. So we don't be doing squatting this week or anything like that. We want to make sure that her quads are active and they start the tone returns and doesn't fall away. We also want to make sure her flexibility remains. Um, and she basically just flushes out her knee and gets it to the point where when she's healed up enough and she can tolerate a bit of load, we can strengthen it properly. So I'll show you that. Now that we've mobilized this knee, this is, this is the interesting thing about Kim's knee is how well it responds. If you look at her flexion now, so she's got right up to that point there and that's getting a little bit tight, but that is magic for 11 days. So she's gonna do really well with her rehab, which is awesome. Rehab wise, she still though has to maintain that. She can't just go, oh, I'm just gonna leave it like that and not worry about my stretches. She's still gotta do her stretches and she's got to keep it going for the next few weeks until she's allowed to do some more strengthening work. So part of her movement is actually bending her knee. So we're calling this flexion. So what Kimmy does is just slides her heel and uses her hamstring to try and bend her knee as much as she can. So she's actively bending her knee, right? So rather than just sort of trying to stretch it, she's actually using muscle tissue here to bend her knee. And then when she slides down, she then squeezes her thigh. What I'm gonna get her doing though to try and combine two things in one, is I'm gonna get her doing a knee extension raise for her quads, okay? And she's at that stage, of, remember, she doesn't have an ACL surgery, so she can do this straight off the bat. Every time she bends a knee, when she comes down, she's gonna go and tense her quads for 10 seconds or so. She's gonna probably try and build that up, though, to 30 second squeezes. So what she's gonna try and think about is not just tensing her quads, the best thing she can try and do is push that knee down into the towel. So think about pushing that knee down the towel using her quads. And you can test that out. You can see that quads working. It's nice and toned there. Then she's got to try and keep that down and lift that heel. Now you can see at the moment she's just getting up. That's hard, isn't it? Right? Because she's got zero degrees extension, but she doesn't have any more than that. On both knees, she doesn't have any of that plus five, plus 10. So she's not hypermobile on her knees. So she's gonna find, this is the one of the things she's gonna find hard, is actually getting in range extension tone in her quads. So meaning, can she tone her quads up at that right end range, which is so crucial for her return to exercise and walking um, because her knee's so tight at that point. So that's gonna be real hard on first. So she has to focus super hard on getting that squeeze out. And so every time she bends it up, so you bend it up for me, she pulls her knee right in, gets as much stretch as she can within reason here. And then she gets that, then she goes down, puts her knee back on the towel, pushes down hard, tenses the heck out of that quad, lifts that up and goes for at least 10 seconds isometric on that quad, maybe up to 30, depending on how much power she's got on that, how much she can tolerate. At the same time, when she does that, She's not allowed to get any pinching feeling in through here. So I don't want any sort of jamming in the joint. If there's fluid in there or that those fat pads are a little bit swollen and irritated, she doesn't want to go and pinch them and jam them. So crucial that when she does this, it's not painful here. There's fatigue and she feels a pulling, but not that sharp little pinch. So that's her bending and straining supine. You also want to get her doing it lying on her front to get some extension and some flexion the other way. So if you have a turnover onto your front, Kimmy, um, this way, what she's going to try and do is actually shovel to the end of the bed, Kim, for me, is she's going to use her other leg to help out, right? So this is her injured leg or her surgical leg. She's going to try and bend that up with her other leg to assist. So she puts her right leg under her left. Now, if you use your left hammy, Kim, lift your knee up, and then she gets to the point where this maybe runs out of steam or she gets too much tightness here, this leg, is then going to do the physio work if you like. She's going to drive it up and get as much stretch as she can and then let it go down and she can use her hamstring on the way down. And when she's down there, then she lets it go. And this is where you can sort of, again, two birds with one stone here. She can then lift this leg up and push down on her heel and push that knee straight and really try and just get this much opening up at the back of the knee, because this can get very, very tight post-surgically at the back of the knee. So she's gonna ram that down that way, stretch it out again, not allowed any pinch through the front. And then once she's done that for 10 seconds, then she let that go. 
and you come up and she's just doing that for reps. And you basically say, you know, how often do I need to do that? Say, well, until you're bored, basically. She's just got to try and loosen up until it feels a lot better and just does that for a good, I'd say probably about 10 minutes she does that, pushing down, pushing down, push, 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 as much as she can through there and then lifting up again. Now, the good thing about Kim's progress is going to be, keep going, Kim, is she's got a personal trainer as well, Dave. Now, the good thing about that is she goes, she's already been going to the personal trainer and she's going to return. Now, she can return to that trainer as of today because the trainer can then help do the exercises that I prescribe. So the, phys the trainer can do the physio exercises, make sure she's doing them correctly, which is quite a good thing because sometimes patients don't do them at home, so the trainer will help them with that. She can also get on the bike now, so she can go on the trainer with the bike. And then, of course, in that session, she can do core work, upper body work, all that other stuff that doesn't involve the knee or loading the knee, she can get into, which allows her to keep exercising, keeps her motivation up, which is so important when you're going through knee surgery. So that's her sort of on-bed stuff. She also does some glute work like clams, side rages, that sort of thing, um, which I'll show you in a minute.